Maurice Ashley. What's up? I, I would toast with some Hennessy right now, but, but you know, we got to, everybody's social distance and nobody's, nobody's partying, but, I, but I'm virtually toasting Hennessy with you right now. <laughs> I feel you too, man. I feel you too. It's good. It's all good. You know, we got to do what we got to do. Man, it, it, we do. We do. We got to stay safe. And uh, man, first of all, let me just start by saying it's a pleasure, man. I am uh, very familiar with with who you are and the things that you've done. Uh, uh, and, I, you know, I, I don't know a lot about chess. I, I, I will say that. But you've changed that for a lot of people, meaning that people that used to not know about chess, especially in the African-American community, uh, now everybody is is seeing what you've done and your accomplishments and what you continue to do as a grandmaster, as the first um, uh, African-American grandmaster, man. That's, that's an incredible accomplishment, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the love. And as you said, you know, sending that message out to the people, especially the young people, that we can be a force intellectually as well as everything else we're famous for doing. Man, I have so many questions for you, man. Uh, but I think the first question that comes to mind is, how did it feel when, when you were initially approached by Hennessy uh, to, to, to do a, a campaign with them? Man, I tell you, I didn't believe it at first. Seriously. I was like, nah, this is fake news, man. I'm not buying this. And my, I sent the information to my agent, and she called up, and she rapped, and she came back and said, Maurice, this is real. This is actually going to happen. And it's just like a fairy tale, man. It's been a fairy tale ever since. That's amazing. That's amazing. And so how did you feel when you first saw yourself in these commercials, man? Because these things, I ain't even got to tell you, man. You know how, like, everybody has seen these commercials, man. This thing has gone viral in so many different ways. Um, how was that feeling, man, when you saw this? Well, you know, it's funny because I don't actually appear in the key commercials that made it on on air, but uh, a younger player represents, a younger actor representing me as a younger player plays in it. And the end of it, you see that it's me, the story is being told about me and the accomplishment that, of becoming that's, that's how a I should have framed it. I'm sorry, yeah. That's quite all right. But the, the thing is, for me, when I first heard about it, I knew about Hennessy and this Never Stop, Never Settle campaign from Marshall Major Taylor. And he was a cyclist from the 1900s African-American who was winning world championships that I saw during the NBA games, right? That they, cause they play, you know, they play those commercials while the playoffs are going on. So when I saw myself, at least my story being portrayed while I'm watching the Celtics trying to maul the heat, you know, or watching LeBron do his thing. And I'm sitting there thinking, I cannot believe that this is real. Like a commercial about myself doing my favorite sport that I've watched for decades, and then to see that is just like, there's no words to explain. And I'm glad you brought up LeBron because I'm a Laker fan, so that was that was that that <laughs> was that was that was, that was uh, points right there, man, for sure. Um, so, what, what what's your favorite Hennessy drink? First, I, I I wanted to ask you that. Well, you know, I drink different ones. But the one that they asked me to make into the Grandmaster, it is now called the Grandmaster, speaks to my Jamaican roots, where you mix it with some ginger beer. It's nice and simple. Just Hennessy oh, and ginger okay. beer. You put that together, garnish it however you want. That's the drink right there. I, I got it. I got it. Okay, you got, you got me wanting to try that. That sounds that sounds. Oh, yeah. Dope. You're going to like it. And, I, and what, I, what I guess I meant by, like, because of this campaign and obviously because of your popularity before even, you know, teaming up with Hennessy, you see your face everywhere. That's got to be a crazy feeling that that you got there because of something that you you love so much. Like that, it was was it one of these things that you you know, and you touched on this a little bit. You could never have imagined that chess would have took you this far to the point where, you know, you got commercials about you. You see your face going viral. You've hooked up with Hennessy like that's that's got to be a, a, a surreal feeling. It is a surreal feeling. You know, I grew up in Jamaica and then in, in Brooklyn. And when you're growing up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, I'm talking where Mike Tyson's from. You know, never ran, never will. And you go from that to never stop, never settle. Like the whole evolution of that growing up with with the kids I grew up with, the neighborhoods we were in, you know, it was tough. 
And then growing up playing the brothers in Brooklyn, the parks in chess, getting hustled, the trash talking, the music, the whole vibe. And to go from that to the elite world of grandmaster chess on the international level where you're competing with the best players in the world, it's, it's, it's just really extraordinary. It's like, it's really a dream come true. A fantasy when I was in Brooklyn as a 14-year-old listening to the gunshots outside and then to know that I've gone as the many places I've gone, whether it's to Paris or to South Africa or to Moscow, and all because of a game I love so passionately in chess. I mean, I play chess or think about chess every single day. I wake up doing, creating stuff. So it's just a joy for me. So your chess is what my music is. Um, it, it, it's, and, I, and maybe I'm off here, but for me, music is an escape. Uh, to, to, you know, escape, you know, whatever, whether it be things you're dealing uh, with just in general in life with, with just crazy people. Um, for me, having a chance to work with, uh, you know, the likes of Kanye and Diddy and, and Pitbull and uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa and, you know, uh, the list goes on. I, I, I feel so blessed. And to be in this position where Hennessy, you know, recognizes some, somebody like myself, um, to never stop and never settle is something that I can relate to because, you know, you get to a certain level, you know, working with, for me with some of these artists uh, and having the success I've had uh, on Power 106 radio out here in Los Angeles um, has unbelievably made me want to do exactly that. Never, I, I never want to stop. I feel like I keep having to prove myself even more so uh, because, you know, in some cases the competition gets tougher or, you know, things happen where people test you in different ways. And, you know, in this case, being the grand master, uh, a grand master, I should say, um, never settling, uh, never stopping, never settling. How do you define that? Like, how is that defined for somebody like you has, uh, who has seemingly accomplished like the pinnacle of success in your career or field or, or uh, enjoyment, I guess, you know, your sport. Chess as an intellectual game humbles you because it is so vast. It's so complicated. It has so many possibilities. There are more moves in chess than atoms in the observable universe. Check that. Wow. All right. That's how complex the game is. So we and do you never, have a number on that. Like it have, what is that? T 10 to the 120th power. OK, wow. so we are talking about literally almost endless possibilities. Nobody in, in the first four moves in chess, there are over three billion possibilities. That's just the first four moves. We're not talking about 15, 20, 40. So we understand as chess players that we never know the game perfectly. And the computers have also not even solved it. So us humans are not going to solve it. So we know you're always learning. There's always room to grow. And for me, that's what never stop, never settles mean. It's always an opportunity every day to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's amazing that you say you actually learn from it. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm assuming that also means the, the, the players that you're the people you're playing against. And absolutely. Being somebody who doesn't understand and follow chess that much. Like I said, I knew who you were because, you know, you you've. Uh, you've hit the pinnacle of your sport, so to speak. And, it, and is it fair to call it a sport? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I'm, we try, we're trying to whoop your ass. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we, we're trying to take you down. So right. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> when you sit in front of us, you're going to sweat. You're going to get nervous. Your heart's going to palpitate. All of it's going to happen. You're, you're not going to stop. Gonna feel you're not going to settle. That and, you're going to feel like you, you, when you're done playing a grandmaster, you're going to feel like you ran a marathon. That's how intense it is. When you're learning playing chess with people, how everybody is it because you 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 you're dealing with different personalities? Like how does that work? Because on a basketball court, you know you you're learning, or on a football field, you're learning from a player by their different moves and 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 anticipating where their eyes at and where they're gonna where their eyes are and where they're gonna throw the ball. How does that translate into chess exactly? You just like, you just said it, learning different moves. Somebody plays a move you've never seen before. They drop an idea on you and you go, 
whoa, what's this about? And then you start breaking it down and you realize, yo, this is some dangerous stuff I have to face. And then you got to come up with your best idea in order to compete against that. And you go to different countries, different different people have playing styles, different openings, like I said, different variations. You got all these names named after openings like the French defense, the Italian game, the Dutch defense, all these different countries that added to the wonder of this game and we study. You ain't never, you ain't never messed with the, you ain't never messed with the East LA defense or the Compton defense. You ain't been hit <laughs> you with know, that I, one yet. We got, we got to come up with something from Compton straight up. <laughs> the Compton the, variation, the Los that's Angeles be defense. Right there. What, that's so, right. What, what? Give me an. Is there something that comes to your mind that stands out uh, that that you've just been like, ooh, like I'm sure there's been a lot of times, but give me an example of something that uh, that that somebody you're playing against can do. That just makes you kind of, I don't want to say be stumped, but makes you realize like, whoa, you know, I'm a grandmaster, but this is some crazy ish I'm doing. I'm seeing in front of me right now. Like, is there something that happens? Dude, that happens all the time. Okay. That happens all the time. It's not, it's the point of being a grandmaster is that you want to create something new that nobody has seen before that people just scratch their heads and go, what's this guy coming up with? Right. And so you're you're always being surprised in chess. So like you're just always being LeBron, surprised. You're never fully prepared. LeBron being a grandmaster, if you will, of basketball, he's constantly seeing things every game that makes him go, "Wow, that was crazy," and he's learning from that's right from the from these players. I see what you're saying. And, and the coaches are bringing that to to the situation as well. You know whether or not you see one defense, that defense is getting shredded. Let's switch back to a zone. And see if they can deal with that one, right? And then you go two, three zone, and then you switch back up again uh, to to man on man. But you never know what they're going to throw at you. So it's those kind of defensive mind specialists that you have in chess, where people will throw moves that you just simply haven't seen, positions you haven't seen, opening variations you haven't seen that push the creativity of the game forward. And we study fat books. I mean, I got a chess book right here. All right, this book right here is nothing compared to the amount of knowledge you need to play chess. This is just a small fraction of what we study. All right. I got over 500 chess books in my possession, a lot of them in storage. And that's what we do. We sit, we study chess books. I got books behind me. I mean, that's what we do. We just keep on pushing the envelope, never stopping, never settling, learning something new every single day. Yeah, and, 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 and equating it to, to sports like football and, and baseball, I played baseball coming up. You know, I had uh, opportunities in baseball that, that I never embarked in, maybe in the way that I, sh- that I could have. Music kind of took over. But I'm thinking about all the books that have been written about baseball or even the books that have been written about music. And I can relate in the sense that, you know, you can give somebody a book this thick, 50 of them, and they may never learn and understand what you come to, to learn, or in my case about music or baseball, in your case about chess. How is it when you have somebody like the, the RZA, uh, which is a good friend of mine, I've known him for years, I know how competitive he is, I know how smart he is, uh, Jizza as well, how is it playing chess with, with, with somebody, you know, folks like that, that you know, have they know you're coming, they know the cameras are there. They, they're a fan of yours. You're a fan of theirs. And now you're sitting down playing a, a, a chess match with them. Well, it's exciting to hang out with them. You know, I've known them for years as well. We played before. We knew what the deal was. You know, they knew what was coming. I, I wasn't that I was worried about the matchup when I was playing against them. Because when you're going to be on the chessboard, we ain't talking hip hop. We're talking chess. You go on the chessboard, you're going to have to bring it. And they have skills. Don't get me wrong. But there's levels and then there are levels. And that's, that's what I brought to them when we played. Would, would you say that would have been equivalent from, uh, as to them giving you a microphone and saying, hey, man, we about to have this rap battle. Let's get it popping. Don't, don't test me. Would you, no, be, no. would you be a better rapper than, than the RZA and Jizza are chess players? No, no, I'm not trying to go there. I'm not trying to go there. <laughs> From time to time, I try to put a little something on there, you know, but it's, uh, it, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. They, those guys are grandmasters. They even have a grandmaster album, Jizza does. So let, let's not even try that, man. Those guys got skill. Yeah, they may see this and get, you might get that phone call like, yo, I heard you want a battle. We got the spot. We got the mic. Not, <laughs> yeah, my stuff is small time compared to them, man. I'm not even going to go there. So, 
uh, you grew up in Jamaica. When did you first move here to the state? When I was 12 years old. And where did you grow up exactly? In, in, in New in York. J- in New York, Brownsville, Brownsville, Brooklyn. That when was you, hardcore, man. Those are street days. Being a, being a teenager growing up, thinking back to that, and then everything that you've done now, if there was a, 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 a film that was made about you, who would you see playing you as a teenager, and who would you see playing you as, you know, current day? Well, the first thing i say about that is, to have a film made about you is already a special honor. So I'm already, I already won. That's like, give me the Oscar now. <laughs> exactly. But I would say, first of all, they got to know how to act and they better be good looking. So just represent a brother. That's all I'm saying. Just, just represent the right way. But I got to think about a few actors. I mean, you know, you could throw in a little Tay Diggs. Uh, you might, you know, throw in, throw in um, Mars Chestnut or somebody like that. You know, they, they can get it. They can hold it down. Uh, on the on the child level, I might think of like a Niles Fitch, you know, from This Is Us. Okay, you can get it done. You know, and I, I'm not asking for much, just acting chops and good looking. That's all I want. So That's a, all I want. a Chris Tucker that played in Friday and stuff like that. That might Chris Tucker. <laughs> nah, nah. See, I want to know names, man. I want to hear <laughs> because I feel like this is gonna happen. I feel like with everything that's going on and and chess becoming more popular you becoming more popular, you, uh, you know, helping chess become more popular in different arenas, so to speak, no pun intended. Uh, I I feel like the day is approaching very quickly that we're going to see some type of movie. uh, And you don't see a lot of movies about chess. You see scenes in movies about, you know, that incorporate chess. And everybody talking about, you know, oh, what's your next move and that type of thing. And but uh, to, I, I'm ready for a full blown chess movie, because the more that I've looked into things uh, that you've done and, and the more that I've looked in you know, to chess as a result of my relationship with Hennessy, I'm ready to see more. I want to see more. I so feel if, you. If, if you if, if you can't really. I really want to hear. But I'm going to say, if you can't put a face and a name and an actor to who would play that, it, it, how would you see that movie unfolding? If you were sitting there with a director and a writer and they were saying, listen, we want to do this movie about chess, in particularly being a uh, grandmaster, what would you suggest to the writer and, and the director that this movie had to encompass in a nutshell? Well, I think the most important thing is the journey. The journey was not easy. As I said, I grew up uh, in Jamaica. My mother was brave enough to leave the family when I was a two-year-old. My sister was a seven-year-old. I had an older brother as well. A seven-month-old, excuse me. I was a two-year-old. My sister was a seven-month-old. And she left us in the care of our grandmother. She made that ultimate sacrifice of being away from us for 10 years. You know, it's difficult being without your mom. But she came to this country to pave the way. And her struggle, my grandmother was 64 when she started raising us. And so to raise somebody from 64 to 74, where you could just be retired and done, you know, and go, go enjoy your old age. That's a sacrifice. She was willing, that was a major sacrifice to raise her daughter's three children. And then for us to come to America, be in Brooklyn during the days of Brooklyn. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about nowadays Yorkies and lattes. Right. No. I'm talking about BK when it was real, it was hardcore, when you were dodging bullets, when I was the serious back in the day. And to grow up in that, and then for me to take my journey, and not just me, you don't know, but my brother is a three-time world champion kickboxer, and my sister is a six-time world champion boxer. So this family came out of that upbringing, and for all of us to be about never stopping, never settling, to rise to the, the pinnacle of our professions, That's extraordinary. So to me, it's all about the journey. It's all about resilience. It's all about fortitude and determination. It's overcoming the obstacles in front of you. It's believing you can, even though the world may suggest that you can't. And I think that that's always going to be an inspirational story that people are going to want to watch and hear how it evolves and how they can get some of that for themselves, especially during tough times like this that we're all going through. 
No, that's that's right. And that movie would have to be called Never Stop, Never Settle. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know another thing that Hennessy uh, uh, talks about and, and pushes, if you will, uh, is is uh, to to push your limits. You know how how do you push your limits when you get to such a pinnacle? in life and in your career? Like, what is it that you do at this point to push your limits? I think that you have to recognize that the most important thing to a professional should always be the journey, not the destination, the process, not the result. If you start seeing the finish line as the end product, then when you get there, what more can you do? How much more can you enjoy yourself? How much more can you enjoy what it is that you're involved in? So to me, there is no gold medal. Yes, I did get a medal when I became a grandmaster, but that just meant I became a grandmaster. It was more to learn. There's still more to do in in the sport. But also, I'm interested in a lot of things. I study languages, you know, study French, Spanish, study Russian. I was learning some Mongolian yesterday. Uh, Anything that can reinterpret the way I talk about the world is something I love. I love traveling. Chess is part of traveling, going to different cultures, meeting different people. I love to dance, you know, check me out on the salsa floor, the dance floor, salsa and bachata. Uh, Listen to some Mark Antony and do my thing. I love uh, to exercise. You you catch me in the gym. I'm never fit enough. And even now with COVID, it's even worse because the gyms have been shut down here in New York. So It's tough to get that going. So I'm always trying to do something to improve myself. And I believe that incremental improvement every day leads to large gains over time. So that's what you do in order to consistently push yourself, never stop, never settle, and be successful. Yeah, and, you know, and continuing to push your limits. And and I I think that's interesting to say, uh, and and God rest his soul, uh, my friend Nipsey Hussle, you know, uh, the marathon continues. And... And I, and I think that, that that means that even when you have, quote unquote, crossed the finish line, that marathon is not over. Uh, in some cases, it might just be the beginning of that journey, to your point. And, you know, because there's so many other things that uh, y- y- your life, uh, you know, y- that you have in life outside of chess. And you touched, you, you've touched on this a little bit. Uh, and I'm gonna put you on the spot. There's no gym, but as long as you got an empty floor right there, you don't have an excuse. You're right. You got you got to keep true. up that exercise. I'm, I've been on my bicycle. Trust me, the whole summer <laughs> I was riding riding my bicycle, man. I was going around Prospect Park like I was training for the Tour de France. So I've been <laughs> nice. doing my thing. Nice. No, no Lance Armstrong in, in, in this. No, 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 and no, there, no, no, no. And there's some there's some uh, there's a lot of places I can go with that. Uh, but but I, I think one of the things I want to that's a kind of a good segue because, you know, Lance obviously did some things that, you know, altered his performance. Right. How is there a way in chess that somebody can alter their performance and get away with it? Have you ever ran across a situation, I guess, where somebody has tried to cheat their way into a win? How does that work? Well, sadly, yes, it is possible. Uh, and, it, and it has been done more frequently than you think. The reason why is this phone right here, this cell phone, has chess programs on it. And these chess programs will play better than human beings. They'll play moves that you never even think of. So what people because will do the sometimes. algorithms and stuff. That's right. They program them now. Back in the day, they couldn't do it. But now they just, they, they're monsters. So what people will do is during a chess tournament, they might you know, hide their phone somewhere and in the middle of the game, go sneak to the phone and put the position in and ask the computer, what would you do right here? So in chess tournaments now, they actually wand people before they come in. Do you have, a, you have any mechanical devices on? Your watch, what's the deal with your watch, right? Everything now, because you know, it's, all, it's all down to these digitized small versions of these computers that frankly have more technology in them than it took to put a person on the moon. Right. So with that, people do that. We play online chess now because of COVID and people will play online and they have cameras. But, you know, people will hide it somewhere because they got cameras in the, on your screen and also behind you. 
But people will figure out ways. The human mind, man, is, is devilish that way. So you see some moves come out of nowhere, you're like, come on, you know that's not a human move. This computer's playing like that. So, oh, yes, really? those kind of things do happen. Absolutely. So that wouldn't They're be a good example stay- of pushing the limits. No, not at all. Not at all. That's <laughs> yeah, just cheat, gotcha. cheating your way. You should, you should be banned from the sport. It's dangerous to do that. You just be banned from the sport for life when you do stuff like that. Man, I could talk to you for a really long time. I, 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 wish I, I wish I had more time, and I wish you had more time. Um, I, I'm going to leave you with this. If there, was one, if there was one person that I know, that we all know, that you would love to see in a game of chess, who would that person be? Wow. My goodness. I just saw like an encyclopedic list go past me. There's so many people that have inspired me over time. If I had to sit down and play chess, but they, somebody, but it would be enjoyable for you as well. Maybe it's somebody you're a fan of and you know they're in chess that you know that this is going to be this is going to be fun. I'm going to have a good time beating the socks off of, of, of insert person here. Well, there's somebody I've already played and he was so enjoyable to play against. And he's a good player as well is Will Smith. Uh, very humble guy. Very smart, as you know, we've known over time. But he's a big chess fan. And anytime I say with Will, it's fun. So it would have to be Will because he's just got that personality, that vibe. And he's competitive. And he's, he's all about learning. And talk about somebody who never stops, never settles. Woo. My goodness. That man is at the highest level. I would I absolutely love to hang with Will. Uh, I hope he sees future. this. I hope he sees this and takes you up on that offer because that would be amazing. Uh, He's amazing. Absolutely. He is in more ways than one. And you are too. And on, on that note, never stopping, never settling. I never stop. I never settle. They're calling me. I got to get on the airwaves here. I'm about to get on these turntables uh, and get people. Do your thing, man. Yeah, man. And I, hopefully one day we get to meet in person. Uh, but man, it's been my pleasure. And again, like we got to have part two of this because I got a whole lot more to ask. Pleasure's mine. Anytime you want me, man, I'm here. Maurice, cheers to you, bro. Stay safe.